What's going on, TI family? I thought I'd check in with you guys today and talk about this battle between the billionaires, Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk, over this Twitter verse threads uh, scenario. So me personally, I've just started to get back active on Twitter. I wouldn't say active. I, I've, I've started to get back on the uh, platform and actually at least scroll, scroll and see what's going on. I haven't posted anything in a long time. Uh, but apparently it seems like Elon Musk is not too happy about the rival uh, Mark Zuckerberg and the, the Meta CEO, uh, this new platform that they created called Threads. Now, I'm not a uh, uh, I don't have threads, so uh, I don't know how that platform operates. But apparently it is uh, very similar to the way Twitter operates. And uh, I thought I'd kind of break this down. I'm going to go through this NPR organization article, but I thought I'd break this down from an intellectual property perspective because a lot of times, and I said in one of my earlier videos, the, the most common forms of intellectual property that you will see would be patents, would be trademarks, and also copyrights. Uh, but you also have this trade secret, uh, trade secrets, which are also uh, a form of intellectual property. You don't see it too often, but it is out there. I, I would probably say the most well-known form of it is uh, the Coca-Cola formula. So a lot of people know that Coca-Cola is a very popular drink liked by a lot of people. Uh, and it's something that competitors have been trying to uh, reproduce or kind of you know, regenerate, reverse engineer, whatever the case you want to say. This Coca-Cola, uh, this formula that has been, uh, been so good, has provided uh, value for so long, such a long time. And uh Again, the thing that's different about trade secrets compared to those other three forms of intellectual property I talked about is, number one, it lasts forever, much like trademarks, uh, to the extent that you can keep it a secret, it lasts forever. So you think about Coca-Cola, uh, that that you know, trade secret will continue to last forever as long as they don't publish it, as long as it uh, doesn't become uh, like you know, public information. But also... It's one of those forms of intellectual property that you have to keep protected. As long as you keep it protected, it's going to be a trade secret. And uh, you know, unlike copyrights or patents or trademarks, where you have to actually file something with the either the United States Patent and Trademark Office or the Copyright Office with a trade secret, you don't file it with any federal governmental office. You keep it a secret. You have to take reasonable efforts to keep something a secret. So, what does reasonable efforts mean? That means that if you have uh, Say a thousand employees in your in your uh, organization, and all a thousand employees have this uh, this information that you're deeming is valuable. It's most likely not a trade secret because the court is going to say, "Hey, if this stuff is so valuable, why does the whole company have access to it?" Uh, it should be a, a small subset of the company that has access to this information. They should have access to the information to the extent that they need it to carry out their jobs. So you can still have maybe fifty people. In, in an organization of 100, for example, that has the information or has this so quote, quote unquote secretive information, and it still not be uh, considered a trade secret because uh, all 50 of 50 of those employees may not need this information. So again, if you have 100 employees and say six of them have the information and they actually needed the this trade secret information to carry out their jobs, then now you're more likely to have this. A confidential information, this secret information, this information that's giving you a competitive advantage in the marketplace is uh, more likely to be considered as uh, trade secret information, especially if you're taking reasonable, eff reasonable effort. So you have uh, locks in place, you have uh, you know, different passwords in place for those uh, you know small subset of employees to actually get access to this information. As long as you're taking reasonable efforts to, uh, to protect this information, it will be considered uh, or it's like more likely to be considered, I should say, trade secret information. So, uh, and let, let's look at this article really quickly and I'll continue to break things down, uh, from an intellectual property perspective, break things down on these trade secrets as we, uh, get off into the article here. So let's see here. Uh, let's see if I can add it to the screen. Okay, here we go. So this is from NPR, uh, Twitter thread is to sue his new rival threads claiming meta stole trade secrets. So, I mean, there's some serious allegations here and pretty much what Elon Musk is saying is, uh, Hey meta, you took our trade secrets. So let's, let's go through the article. So Twitter has threatened. So they haven't actually sued meta yet, but they're threatened to sue saying that, Hey meta, you st you essentially stole our trade secrets. Uh, so it says Twitter has threatened to take legal action against threads, a new rival app uh, for Meta that has gained 
you know, tens of millions millions of users since it's released on Wednesday. So it seems like this uh, app through Meta Threads is uh, getting a lot of traction. On the same day, an attorney representing Twitter uh, sent a letter to uh, essentially Mark Zuckerberg uh, accusing Threads of engaging in systematic and willful unlawful misappropriation of tra trade secrets, Twitter's trade secrets, and other intellectual property. Says the letter, which was you know essentially uh, reported by uh, Semaphore, accuses Meta of hiring dozens of former Twitter employees with the intention of creating a copy platform. So what the lawsuit is trying to allege, because in these lawsuits, you have to allege something that is actually going to uh, maybe hold weight or if if true, can uh, can 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 be beneficial to you or have you uh, stand victorious. So in this case, uh, Twitter is saying, hey, Meta, you you hired our former employees and uh, you knew they had this secret information and they actually uh, took this information and uh, use it in helping build the, uh, the, this this new Threads platform. Now, what we know, something else that we know about uh, this trade secret information is, again, if it's published or it's uh, you know made available to the public uh, without any misappropriation, which is, the, I guess, the trade secret term, or in other words, improper means, it is not considered trade secret infringement or trade secret misappropriation. But if uh, Meta essentially, in this case, has gotten this information through bribery, through theft, or through breach of a, some type of non-disclosure agreement, for example, that can make them liable for trade secret information. And pretty much what uh, uh, you know, Twitter is saying is, hey, you guys hired our employees that had this confidential information, most likely uh, that they had to keep secret through this non-disclosure agreement. And these employees breached a non-disclosure agreement and actually gave you guys this information that you all then used to build up this platform. This is essentially what Twitter is trying to say uh, happened between uh, or with uh, Meta employees, which is leading the trade secrets. So let, let trade secret infringement. But let's get back into the lawsuit here. Uh, Twitter intends to strictly enforce its intellectual property rights and demands that Meta take immediate steps to stop using Twitter, Twitter trade secrets or the highly confidential information uh, Twitter reserves all rights, including but not limited to the right to seek civil, uh, both civil remedies and injunctive relief without further notice. So, so this is a print, uh, essentially what uh, Twitter attorney is looking to do. Hey, they're you know, threatening to bring a suit for uh, uh, you know, trade secret infringement, which is a civil, civil remedy in this case. No one on Thread's engineering team is a former Twitter employee. That's just not a thing. Uh, so who, who, who is talking here? So it seems like somebody from Meta. Which again, that that's that's that that can be important information because uh you know at some point Twitter will have to prove out this information that hey you took you hired our employees away and who had this confidential information and then they uh use this confidential information uh in spite of uh some, their non disclosure agreement an agreement of non disclosure on their part uses to build this platform but Meta is saying hey hold on those employees that we hired from you guys. They're not even being used on the uh, or used for the creation of this platform, which eh, it could be interesting. Now, and obviously, they can have then given this information to the engineering team that helped build uh build this Threads platform. But again, the fact that they're not uh you know on this engineering team that built the platform that that could be uh, relevant information. So let let's keep going with this thing. Uh, seems like Twitter uh, owner Elon Musk is saying, hey. A competition is fine. Cheating is not. So, you know, essentially, uh, Elon Musk seems to be, uh, you know, pretty upset about uh, threats, cheating or or meta, you know, cheating to try to get ahead here. So Twitter has seen a host of challenges for similar, uh, uh, I guess, you know, micro uh, blogging platforms since Musk first acquired a platform for $44 billion last year, which is still a crazy amount to me. But none have grown quickly as threats. So it seems like, you know, they've had other, you know, competitors, but not to the size of this, not to the size of threads. Uh, which you know, it seems like 70 million people have signed up, uh, you know, pretty quickly there. So, the app's user interface looks and operates much like Twitter with buttons to re like, reply, repost, or quote a thread. But users have uh, bemoan the lack of some classic Twitter features. So, it seems like it's kind of missing some classic Twitter features. So, it seems like that's pretty much it. Uh, let me stop sharing this. So, yeah, I, I'm going to continue to kind of you know, follow this uh, article or follow this uh, situation and kind of bring to you guys updates as they come out. Uh, seems like, I mean, obviously, anytime you're uh, being sued or uh, uh, 
threat uh, su- uh, threatened uh, for intellectual property uh, infringement. That's serious stuff. And so I'll definitely be out on the uh, lookout as updates uh, progress in this case. I thought it was worth bringing to you guys because, again, it's dealing with trade seekers, which you don't see too often and works a little differently compared to other forms of intellectual property that I talked earlier about in this video. Uh, so if you have a trade secret and make sure you're protecting it, understanding the value that it brings to you and your company from an uh, economic advantage standpoint in a marketplace, uh, you know, continue to make reasonable efforts uh, to protect it, uh, such as, uh, you know, having non-disclosure agreements in place uh, between the people who have access to it. Make sure they have to, you know, do things such as put in passwords uh, t- to gain access to protect it from other employees uh, from gaining access to it. And uh, understand if somebody, you know, they get gain access to it, you know, using means such as theft, bribery, or breach of some type of non-disclosure agreement, and they can be, you know, held liable for a, a misappropriation, trade secret misappropriation. So I thought this was interesting. Hopefully, you guys gain some value out of this, and uh, look forward to keeping up to date on, as this situation progresses. Until next time, peace.